In this video, we're going to be going over a axle rebuild on an LC100. If you look closely at right height, we have inner CV boots that are rubbing. Uh, that's just going to wear and tear uh, very quickly. As you can see on this side, the boots are already gone. So we're gonna try to do the inner boot stretch mod. I've done this on Forerunners and Tacomas. So hopefully it applies to this model. If it does, we'll be able to see the difference at right height once I'm all finished up. Okay, so first things first, get the jack, get the truck off the ground and uh, get some jack stands in there for safety. I use these 10 ton Sunex jack stands that I got off Amazon a while back. Uh, they are pretty much at the lowest setting right here and go all the way up to the last peg spot on that black stand. So they're very helpful when working on these larger trucks. Um, something I always recommend compared to the smaller jack stands that are out there. You take off the cap for the snap ring on the axle, uh, loosen up the ABS lines, take off the upper ball joint and uh, get the caliper off so we can swing the axle out on these trucks, you get the inner joint out, drop it below the diff, and then slide it out. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna have to take off the lower ball joint in order to get it out with this joint first and the inner joint second. So, I like to use a very fine wood chisel you can get at Home Depot. Gets right in between the cracks on these Toyotas. And uh, it just takes a little bit of effort, usually. If you use a big screwdriver or flathead, it'll just ruin it. All right, so we got the snap ring right here. Okay, so for this snap ring, you need this special um, plier. It's a snap ring plier. Here's the snap on part number for it and basically it just makes quick work of all of these little weird snap rings when you're doing Toyotas. <clears throat> Once I take the caliper off, I like to use one of these little hooks. I also got this on Amazon and it'll save your brake lines. Uh, they're like 10 bucks for a pair, but it's a lot better than a coat hanger. There we go. Okay, so we got that out. I'm gonna loosen up this ABS line right here as well, just to make sure I have enough slack when I pop that inner CV out. I'll take this off the arm. Okay, so this is all loose. We need to take get the ball joint nut off. Should be relatively easy. The hardest part is getting the taper to snap free. You could hit it with a hammer on these flat parts. Most of the time it works. This ended up working out better, so let's get it off the rest of the way. All right. As you can see here, we have the snap ring off. We undid the ball joint, the ABS line right here, and the ABS line right here. We have the brake caliper hanging safely, and we popped the inner CV loose from the diff. So now we're just going to slide it out this way, drop it a little bit, and then pull it out through that other side. Otherwise, coming straight out towards me, we'd have to uh, loosen and crack the lower ball joint and the tie rod and just remove the spindle altogether. So we got the axle out. Uh, I ended up doing a little bit more work than I thought. I uh, got the tie rod broken free from the spindle. 
and I took off the last 10 millimeter bolt holding the ABS line, got all of that out of the way and just created a clear path to pull the axle out. Uh, again, once I dropped it down a bit, pulled it straight out, you could leave the lower ball joint on. At this point, it's only one nut at the bottom holding it on. So if you really need to, you can take it off. Uh, but from here, we'll go on to uh, taking this apart and rebooting it. It is aftermarket, so I'm curious to see how the fitment goes compared to a uh, factory boot kit. So with any uh, reboot that I do, um, I use the vise. I have a bucket to get all of the rags that I preset. I get about 10, 15 already cut, ready to go uh, because it is messy. And then I stage the boots, the clamps, C-clips, and here would be the uh, factory part number for the boot kit. And again, this is for an LC100. Uh, this one in particular is a 98. All right, so I popped this clamp off. I cut just around the base of this. Uh, if we do the inner boot stretch mod, which I'm going to try to, uh, we have to keep the bottom smallest portion of the axle boot and I'll explain that later. So here we have tons of grease that's going to make a mess. So I try to clean up as much as I can and just drop the rags in the bucket. It's going to be a process over and over until this is complete. I ran into a snag. This is an aftermarket axle and it is dimpled right here. Um, that will not work with a factory boot that is a complete smooth circle. So the uh, customer is going to bring me another axle that I can rebuild. And we're just going to move on to the passenger axle because for whatever reason, uh, it's still stock. So we'll be able to take that out tonight and rebuild it. Moving on, I put the axle back in on the driver's side, took out the passenger side, and you can see it is a full circle, which is exactly what the OEM boot kit will work on and it's black so more than likely this is a factory axle for sure uh, in order to get the inner cv joint off you do have to take off this c-clip so you could get a little pick or a little flat pry bar like a mini one and uh, get it out so that's what's going to allow that joint to come right off After that, we need to get these spherical balls released and make sure none of them get lost from the birdcage. The birdcage slides down. We'll clean these guys. So these are the balls. There's two more in here. And they're gonna have to be cleaned thoroughly but for now, I'll just clean them up a little bit and get them out of the way. Right here, we'll clean this up and I'll show you a little bit clearer. But there is a clip holding that onto the axle. Okay, so that's off. If this is going to be easy, this should slide off. If not, we'll need a puller. Yeah, that ain't going anywhere. Okay, let me clean this all up and we'll get a puller mounted on. Either that or you could use a press. Sometimes I'll throw it in the press because it's quick, um, which I'm actually thinking I might just do on this one anyway. So I cut the boot off. I kept that little piece down here like I spoke about on the driver's side axle. Got the cage down and cleaned up as much as I could. If you have a three-pronged puller, it'll basically grab this way and pull it straight out. I'm going to throw this one in the press real quick. Basically, I could put the two blocks together and uh, put a socket and get it right out. So 
I'm gonna do that real quick. Hold it out, just come straight out after you get that clip off. Uh, but there is a smaller portion that goes down and you just wanna keep it oriented the same way. So this is the top, keep it aside like that. And this bird cage will come out. And again, all of this needs to be cleaned very well because it's all going back together with those balls and some new grease. Uh, but for now, we're gonna put this over to the side, get this piece out. If it's factory, it should have these little straps that tie it down and you could just pry them open. And that's essentially what you're gonna do when you put it back together, you'll fold them over. So it just comes off like that. And this axle is really dirty, so it's got a lot of gunk built up. Both clips off on the outer CB joint and we're able to get this boot off. This one's sometimes just easier just to cut it out. I could uh, control the grease a little bit more. You just want to be careful with the blade and not try to uh, scar up the axle at all. That way the new boot has a good seal on it. And then before we take all that off, we'll try to clean up some of the grease. From here, it's basically just a major cleaning process. And I'm just going to uh, time lapse forward to when we're ready to reboot. So I packed this side with grease, slid the boot over, and uh, now I'm just gonna crimp this and flip it over so I could fill it with grease and the rest. And we'll get that second clip on to finish this side up.
right, so that's done. Uh, now I just gotta clean it up, get that crimp. Okay, so this side's essentially done. Um, all we have to do now is flip it back over and remember the orientation of the parts that go on it because it's easy to forget. And if you start assembling it incorrectly, it will take twice as long. This is the clamp for the boot. Uh, we're gonna put the boot down. And since we're doing the boot stretch, this is the old portion. I'm gonna put this down where the original boot sat on the axle. And so it'll stretch those out, those ribs out, that way they're not touching on the truck. And if you look, I'm pulling up pretty tight and that piece is still there, so. Uh, it's been used on Tacomas and 4Runners. I'm pretty confident it'll be okay on this one. Uh, now all we have to do is finish the cleanup. And we can get the rest of the parts installed. This smaller conical side needs to be down. This deal here was right side up. Okay, that's back on. The kit comes with a new uh, C-clip. So we'll get that put on, that prevents it from coming out. Verify that it's in. Okay. So going back to these spherical balls, you need to clean them very well. We have the bird cage back in with the spherical balls. I'm going to just put a little bit of grease on it. Most of the grease that I'm going to be putting in is in the uh, CV joint itself. Okay, so we can't forget the clip. This also comes brand new. This is a large clip that we took off in the beginning. So we have to put it back in. That's what keeps that joint from coming off. The clip is back in. Uh, it goes in by hand. You don't need any crazy tools to put it in, but what it does is it stops the joint from coming out. So it limits those spherical balls. And so now all we have to do is get these clamps crimped and this is ready to go back into the vehicle.
So we'll start with this outer one since it's going in the factory spot. You're gonna pry on these little tabs and they'll fold over pretty easily. So that's that. I usually tap it with the ball end of a hammer just to get everything flat and secure. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is we're going to crimp this one. Okay, so that is one rebuilt axle. And as you can see, in an extreme angle, these shouldn't be touching. If they do, it's gonna be a lot less than it was originally. So, let's see if you can get a better view. So on the vehicle, it should be way better than it was before. Everything put back together. It's all back down on the ground. And uh, we can see that the inner boot stretch mod, similar to what you see on Tacomas and Forerunners, has worked very well on the LC100. Uh, this is right off the jack stand, so once I move it back and forth, get a few rotations in the tires and it settles, that last rib will probably relax and come off of the uh, axle a little bit more. But this is very impressive for being right off the jack stands because at the beginning of the video, those were all smashed on each other and when the boots are rubbing they're just destined to tear and wear way faster than when they're not so the mod is essentially free you know during the rebuild process it's a cheap mod it's proven on other applications so i don't see why it won't work on this one for the long run and it's going to make the axles last way longer than they did the owner was uh previously unhappy with the lifespan that he was getting out of him.